I get to do this. Hello everyone, welcome to my first video for YouTube. This is Lipstick Legion. My name is Janine. Um, a little nervous, but I think this is going to be awesome. So before I begin, I just want to let you know what my shop is all about. So Lipstick Legion is what I do is that I create horror replicas and other spooky things. And then an extension of that is Lipstick Legion Craft, which I'm doing today, which will have tutorials, DIYs, um, and all sorts of crafty things, junk journaling, and, and other craft with me videos. So I'm super excited to get started. Okay, so the first thing that you will need for an acrylic pour is your actual surface that you will be pouring on. So I have seen a lot of things on YouTube like canvas, rocks, um, I've even seen some eggs. So what we are trying to do here is really see the results of what we can get if we pour on cardstock, let it dry, and use them for paper crafting things like uh, journal tags and cards. So what helps me do this is to actually tape down the edges of the cardstock and there's also tape underneath. Um, I have found that when I do pours on acrylic that it sometimes warps the paper. So taping it onto a piece of cardboard, especially when you're tilting it, keeps it nice and sturdy and that way when it dries, it dries somewhat flat. So. That's a tip for you guys, tape your edges down. It doesn't really matter if the acrylic doesn't go all the way to the edges on this one because most likely we're going to cover it with embellishments or just either chop it off or use corner edges. Okay, the second thing that you're going to need is some craft paint, craft acrylic paint. I like craft smart. I also like folk art but you're free to use any type of craft paint. The second, third item that you would need are either cups or shot glasses. Because we are pouring on such a small surface, I prefer to use shot glasses, so that way um, I'm not overpowering our paper with tons of paint if we were to use a cup. The fourth item that you would need is some water. Fifth item, very important, is one of your mixing mediums. I like to use Floetrol from Flood. I've seen people use a lot of other things. I mean, if you, if you search um, acrylic pouring, a lot of people use a lot of different mediums. But for me today, I am using Floetrol. And my last item that I actually like to use too is some dish soap or some hand soap. Not much, and we don't really circle it around very much in our mixture, but I have seen some good results with cells from, from dish soap and hand soap, so we'll give it a shot today. Okay, so the measurements are pretty simple. I've put some lines here, I hope you guys can see that, but I've put some lines here where the paint will go, your flow trowel will go, and then your water. The last thing that we add in here is one drop of the hand soap, and that would be your mixture. To save time, I had poured the acrylic paint into the shot glasses, but I will show you the amount of the full trawl of the water and the hand soap. So I've chosen these colors. Um, if you are following me on Instagram, um, you probably have seen that I am working on a Game of Thrones journal. I have done an acrylic pour for the Lannister tags, and now I think that 
it would be interesting if we would do somewhat of sun and summer colors for House Martell. So I have yellow here. I have um, an off-white color, orange, and some gold. So you'll get to know when you start pouring that some colors are a little bit heavier than others. So I noticed with my Lannister pour, I had gold, but it, it pretty much diminished and, and the white was overpowering. And I want, in this pour, the yellow and the orange to be more prevalent. So I'm just going to be careful on how much Floetrol and water I put into each one. So basically, if I want that color to be a little bit stronger, I would put less Floetrol. That makes sense okay so I'm going to start pouring the flow trawl into the yellow first into the white into the orange I put a little bit too much flow trawl into the yellow so I will put that into the gold okay even it out a little bit Again, so I put a little bit more Floetrol in the white and the gold, but I kept the the Martell colors of orange and yellow a little bit less so it can be more prominent. Okay, so I'm going to now dip some water. Okay, and now with the hand soap, it's just one pump. Okay, now we can stir this in. I'm going to stir this one and then be back with the others. I just wanted to show you the consistency of what your paints should be. So you see how it is pretty much not completely fluid and it's more dropping off of the paint stick. That means we need some more water. Okay. Mix it again. Almost there. That looks like a good consistency. So I'm going to do the rest and I'll be right back. So we have all of our colors here mixed. The next thing we're going to do is pour each color as a layer into our clean shot glass. This is what we call a dirty cup. Okay, so the technique of pouring all of these instead of pouring them singularly and pouring them into one cup makes this a dirty cup. So the first layer that we're going to be pouring is the yellow. Okay. The second would be the white. Okay, so if you notice, you want the paint to go straight down. If you see that your paints, if I can try to see it, get a side view. 
If your paints are leveling on top of each other, that means they're still too thick. You want them to pour right in, and that will be your perfect dirty cup. The third color that we're going to pour is the orange. Then the fourth one will be the gold. This is Folk Art Gold. Okay. So we still have some room in our cup, so I can either pour it the same in the same rotation, or I would like to put some more, some more orange, because like I said, we're working on Martels, so they're very heavy on orange and yellows and golds. Um, I'll pour a little bit more yellow. Um, some white and then we'll finish it off with some more gold okay super easy it's it's all up to you it's whatever colors you choose I'm just choosing this because I'm working on a specific theme but um, you don't it doesn't have to be perfect um, as long as your mixture is it's on the money um, your flow will be perfect Okay, so this is the fun part. This is a technique, what we call, obviously, flip cup. So this is my preferred method. Um, again, some people love to make the dirty cup and then do a straight pour. Um, some people use other artist brushes and other instruments, I guess, <laughs> to make cool results but I like to keep it simple I'm still pretty new at this so I just do a simple flip cup so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cup or your shot glass and you're going to place your medium or your surface right on top right and then we're gonna do exactly what we're saying and we're gonna flip the cup over okay so we'll let it sit here. What we're trying to do is have all of the colors and all of the layers settle down. And with the flow trawl and the addition of the hand soap um, and the different portions that we use, some may sink further than the other ones, but that is exactly what you want. And that is what creates all the neat flows and all the cells. So we're hoping to get something cool today. So this should be good. And now we are going to lift the cup. When we lift the cup, um, it's, it's all going to come out and it's gonna look amazing. We do want it to just flow a little bit before we start tilting it. I wanna see where my cells, so, here's a good time to, to discuss the cells. So a cell is basically, let me grab one that it's already made. So it gets, can, there you go. So these guys right here are all cells. They can be really big or they can remain small. So um, depending on how far you stretch your paper or your canvas, you can create big or small cells. Also, putting a flame to the pour, once it's all done, it will burst those bubbles and give you small cells. Um, we won't be doing that today, but um, that is what a cell is. So when you let this sit and it expands after you flip the cup over, you would want to see where your cells lie so that way when you start tilting them, you don't break them or you want them to go in the direction of, of natural flow. Okay, so here we go. Give it a little shake, a little tug, and there we go. Beautiful. Oh, I'm loving that already, it looks amazing it looks like it, it's perfect for what i'm trying to achieve and and that look so here i can already see that i'm creating cells right there that is what we want 
So I don't want to mess with that. So I'm going to lightly start tilting it. So we have the board and we also have Oh my gosh, we also have the um, aluminum foil, jeez, aluminum foil to um, help us with our pour. So don't be nervous about getting it off the cardboard. So it looks like some of our cells have gone away, but that's okay. Sometimes when it dries, we get different results. So let's We also have some leftover paint here, just help it along. I'm just helping it along with my finger. There we go. All right. All right, so I think we are good and we have some cell action here. It's not many, but like I said, when we start to when it starts to dry, a lot of them oxidize and the bubbles start popping or just the just the mixture itself will start settling and then they will give you um, more cells. So for now, let me give you a close up of the cell action here. It's beautiful. I actually love how you can see the gold. If it can focus. I love how you can see the gold and the yellow together. All right there is making a whole bunch of cells. Oh yeah, they're all starting to come out. So this is going to be beautiful when it dries. Sorry for the shake. beautiful and it's almost shimmery too this is going to be awesome when it dries all right guys so this is your acrylic pour on cardstock the cardstock is it's bubbling a little bit but once it dries you're definitely free to put a paper towel um iron it it won't go anywhere and you can get it as flat as these guys Okay, so now that we have made an acrylic pour on cardstock, <clears throat> another thing that I've seen when I was looking to do acrylic pours is that, <clears throat> excuse me, people would do acrylic pours on canvas and like I said, on, on other types of surfaces. But then once they were done with the pouring, it's like, what do you do with with it you know what do you just hang it on the wall like is there other things to do with your pores once you're done so what I'm here to show you is the second half of my first video is to pretty much give you ideas of what you can do with your acrylic pores once they are done so again what I have chose to do is pour on acrylic and use them as journaling tags so the last one that I did and and if you are not following me on Instagram, you can follow me um, at Lipstick Legion. And you can see that the latest one that I did was this one. 
and this is this one I'm going to be using. The camera doesn't really pick it up as good, but it's more red and and black than the pinks that you're seeing here. It's a little bit different, but I'm going to be using this for um, my targ section of the signature of my junk journal. Okay, so um, I have some supplies with me here. Okay, so this is going to be fun because I am house targ and I've been working on Lannisters and I'm almost done with the Tyrell, so I'm itching to get back and do um, all of the Targaryen stuff for my junk journal because it's awesome. So the things that I'm using today I have gotten from Michaels. These is just moss and some raffia. Look how cool this moss is. It's like that purple. I'm going to be using it here, but it's just so cool. I love, love co um, colored moss. I have some sari silk ribbon that I got from Hope and Junk Journal um, Junkies or the boutique. I've used some Tim Holtz Distress ink. And I think the star of this show is when I went to, um, what was it, Salvation Army, and I got myself this awesome dragon book. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's going to be amazing, and it's very easy to get inspiration and little tidbits for my tags. As you can see, I've been kind of dipping into this already um, for my junk journal, but this was just the score of a lifetime. So I have basically, excuse me, I have basically kind of pre-cut everything and see where everything was going to go just um, so I can save some time. I'm sure this video is going to be boatloads long. <laughs> it's like April says, you know, just grab your popcorn and just get cozy because um, it's, it's really hard to do any of these videos, especially if you're trying to do a tutorial and what you can do with it in the same video. I mean, so, but hey, I love long videos and um, I'm hoping you're enjoying this one so far. So, okay. So I think um, I want to use these guys. I kind of love the white on this one instead of all this darkness here because it does get covered. It's kind of sad that this is going to be covered. Because I do love this, like the, the the gold came out on this one awesome. So, hey, you know what? I think that's the name of the game. You know, I think when you stamp things and, and you start layering your embellishments, you know, it's you, you don't want to hide these things. But I guess at the end of the day and, and, and the final picture, it, it really does look amazing. So, it has to be done, I guess. Okay, so... All right, the first thing, I'm gonna put all these guys aside. How am I doing, you guys, so far? Hope I'm doing okay. Hope I'm not speaking fast, because I've been known to speak very fast and when I'm nervous or things. So let me know how I'm doing. Let me just grab my Fabri-Tec. Okay, so, okay, I think the first thing that we should do is glue the border down. And like everyone says, like Fabri-Tac is just amazing and you know what, they're right, is Fabri-Tac is amazing and that's all I gotta say about that. I usually use Fabri-Tac or um, hot glue. <laughs> everything um i'm not gonna do any sewing or i might do sewing but i'm going to come back to it because um no one wants to see me set that up and spend forever doing that so another paper towel okay so we have the border down um i okay want to this dragon part I got from the book. I just stressed it a little bit. I don't know why I even did that because you're not gonna notice. It just looks like it's part of the illustration. 
but he's amazing. And I was thinking that I'm not going to completely glue him all the way down because I want to keep this guy able to come in and out of the tag. So it's almost like a little tag within a tag. So um, let's see how that goes. Uh, you know what? I might want to use a hot glue gun for this. So I don't know if you ever seen these, but this, my friends, is a cordless glue gun. Oh, it's like the pretty much the greatest thing ever. So just be careful when you're using a glue gun. It does get hot, obviously. It's a hot glue gun. I think I put too much there, but hey, that's okay. So we'll put this guy right here. Okay, tap, tap, tap to the touch. And then once we see that it's getting cooled down, I can press down on it. So, hmm, okay, so I do want the, let me go in a little bit. I do want him to be sort of mingled in, is that even a word? Um, I want him to be pretty much within the, the picture. So I'm going to take the border back out and put this guy under. See? So now he kind of looks like it's a little bit dimensional. Okay, that's a better word than mingled dimensional. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm loving him already. All right. So kind of want to make him a little bit rough looking too. Like the actual tag, a little bit more rustic. Um, again, if you have been following me on Instagram, you'll know that with my junk journal, I'm really trying to not use um, commercial or like HBO images, you know, because especially as an artist myself and other artists, I'm sure you will agree that there's so much amazing art um, and people are doing spectacular things with their own imagination and they're actually making them more, um, what is the word? They're, they're, they're making them more of how they should be in relation to the books or more accurate of how they should be in the books than they are in HBO. Nothing against HBO. I love it. It's, it's my favorite show ever in the world, but um, when it comes to art and making a junk journal, I just, I just, um, there's just something so beautiful about, about artists having their own spin on things. And okay, so I have my scissors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this up. Okay. Oh, I'm loving how that comes out in the bottom like that. It's pretty cool. All right, um, take those guys out. I kind of want to take this guy out too. Oh, I forgot my whole punch. I will be <laughs> right back. I'm so, oh, what's happening? Okay, so um, our last step here is to add a hole punch. I think. Mm. Do I want to put it towards the middle or do I want to put it on the side? Mm, let's put it, how about happy medium? Okay. Okay, so we have our hole there. Let's plug this guy back in. All right, so I have this awesome mushroom colored sorry silk that I think it's a nice color for this guy. He keeps it a little bit, keeps the, the rustic motif going. I think I may have cut that a little too long, but that's okay. I have lots of it. Hope is amazing. And she, her sari silk, her dye sari silk is, is amazing. So 
whenever I get a chance, I think, I, I don't remember exactly how much she charges, but I know that it's, it's pretty reasonable. I want to say, no, no, I don't know. But you can look her up on Junk Journals, Junkie. She's always selling um, a sari silk there. Okay. Okay. I love this. What if we just kind of did that too? Yep. So this guy, um, the book has awesome like scale scales and and they're all different to kind of represent the different dragons why are you gonna focus there you go so this one is a specimen it's a wing membrane from a frost dragon juvenile 25 years so i think that's pretty epic so instead of kind of gluing him down i just fabric tack some um cardstock in the back. I think it's from a recollections book and he's gonna be an awesome addition right there. So I think we're good guys. I think the finished product is awesome. Um, I love how it's dragons and, and I love how this represents House Targaryen and and it's not so completely blatant that it's you know HBO House Targaryen with the three dragons. I think that this is this is a beautiful tag in, in its own way and it represents um, the Targaryen family and the house uh, perfectly. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching my first video. Um, I hope to do a video every other week and, you know, while I'm getting editing and while I'm learning things and doing and practicing more on my YouTube, I hope to be a little bit more frequent. But if you like this video, please subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.